Thank you. So yeah, first of all, I wanted to thank the organizers for inviting me and for giving me the possibility to give this talk. So it would be slightly different with respect to all the talks that we heard yesterday and all those that we're going to hear during these days, probably. So my goal is to give you some ideas and some intuitions of what this topic is and uh, to try to convince at least some of you maybe that this is an interesting approach to convex geometry and useful also. So first of all, what do I mean by convex algebraic geometry? So this is a mixture of convex geometry and the real algebraic geometry and algebraic geometry. So the idea is to study problems from convex geometry. Oh. So study problems of convex geometry using tools from algebraic geometry and real algebraic geometry. So here by convex geometry, I mean what we're discussing these days. So functions on convex sets, measures, volumes, and so on. Whereas on the other side, here I put the keywords varieties and semi-algebraic sets. So by a variety, at least for me today, a variety will be the zero set of some polynomials. And uh, this is, uh, if we want to really simplify things, this is the objects that uh, algebraic geometers study. So varieties, their behavior, their degrees, their uh, dimension, and so on. On the other hand, if we move to real algebraic geometry, one of the things that people are interested in are semi-algebraic sets. So these are Boolean combinations of polynomial inequalities. So you have a bunch of polynomial inequalities, you intersect finitely many of them, and then you take a finite union of these sets. This is a semi-algebraic set, and it lives in the real space. So uh, semi-algebraic sets behaves very well with respect to many operations. So you can project them and you get still a semi-algebraic set, or if you have a semi-algebraic set, it's boundary semi-algebraic again. And uh, so, we will call a convex body semi-algebraic in our end if it is a semi-algebraic set. Now, once we define semi-algebraic set, we can also say what a semi-algebraic function is. So I will call a function semi-algebraic if its graph or equivalently its epigraph is a semi-algebraic set. And uh, this notion of semi-algebraicity behaves well with respect to convexity in the following sense. So let me consider K in our N a convex body. Then we have that this convex body is semi-algebraic if and only if its support function is semi-algebraic function, if and only if its radial function is a semi-algebraic function, and if and only if its dual or polar body is a semi-algebraic function. And moreover, this notion is preserved under Minkowski addition. So if you have a finite family of uh, semi-algebraic convex bodies and you take their Minkowski sum, then you still have a semi-algebraic convex body. Now, when you move to infinite sums, the, this is not true anymore, but this is another story. So this is somehow to justify that it makes sense to consider the class of convex bodies that are semi-algebraic. And this is the part about, say, real algebraic geometry, whereas what can algebraic geometry do for convexity? So the main character here is the so-called algebraic boundary. I'm gonna define it. So let's take a convex body again, K in Rn, and I will denote by partial K its topological boundary. So now the algebraic boundary that is denoted with that subscript A, First of all, it's something that lives in the complex space. And it is defined to be the closure of the topological boundary with respect to the Zariski closure. So if you're not familiar with the Zariski uh, topology, we can uh, rephrase this in this other way. So the algebraic boundary is the smallest variety that contains the topological boundary in the sense of variety that I defined before. So Okay, let me show you an example to try to make sense of this notion. So this convex body here, this yellow convex body is uh, the elliptic. Someone calls it also a samosa because it looks like a samosa. <laughs> and uh, so it is the set of real points in R3 such that uh, 
this matrix here is positive semi-definite. And we can rewrite this definition in this way. So as you can see, it is uh, the intersection of a bunch of polynomial inequalities. So by definition, it's a semi-algebraic convex body. Now, if we look at its boundary, it's also a semi-algebraic set. And uh, now we can compute uh, what its algebraic boundary is. So uh, it is uh, the variety associated to this polynomial, this cubic polynomial here. So in particular is the zero set of that polynomial that lives in the complex space. So here I'm showing you just the real part of this uh, variety clearly. And uh, okay, now here the picture is cut, but these ears are go, go to infinity. And uh, at first sight, it looks, it may look bad because we added stuff to our convex body. So it looks like we made it more complicated, but on the other hand, we managed to associate to this convex set, to this geometric object, a polynomial. And so now we can use tools from, uh, um, from um, algebra and commutative algebra to study and to get information about this polynomial that will imply some properties of our complex body. So this is the idea. Okay, and uh, so now let me give you some uh, ideas of some uh, classes of semi-algebraic convex bodies. So first of all, we have polytopes. So polytopes are just finite intersect intersections of finitely many half space. So they are clearly semi-algebraic convex bodies. And then we can generalize the family of polytopes in many different ways. So one direction we can take is the direction of spectrahedra. So spectrahedra are linear sections of uh, the cone of positive semi-definite matrices. So you have this convex cone and you cut it with an affine space, the linear affine space, and uh, what you get is a convex body and it is called a spectrahedra. And uh, here you can study the properties of this convex body by looking at these matrices. So you study basically the matrices in order to get information about this complex set. And uh, these are very important uh, convex sets because uh, they arise naturally from optimization and they play a central role in uh, semi-definite uh, programming. So now you can generalize polytopes also in other directions. So for instance, one direction you may take is the one of convex solves of varieties. Now, Okay, here I needed a short title for this set, for this cartoon, but I need to say something more about what I mean by convex solve of varieties. First of all, because a variety as I defined it is a set in the complex space. So I want to look at the real points of a variety. Now, if the set of real points is not compact, clearly we cannot get a convex body. So here, in this red set, I'm considering convex all of, of the real points of varieties whose set of real points is compact. This is clearly a convex body, but it turns out to be also semi-algebraic. And uh, so studying the boundary of convex souls, at least in my opinion, is a very tricky question. But in this case, algebraic geometry gives you a very precise answer on what the algebra boundary of the convex all of varieties is in terms of dual varieties and secant varieties and other objects that are relatively classical in algebraic geometry. So as we see from this cartoon, not all convex bodies are semi-algebraic. And one family that I'm interested in uh, that is not completely semi-algebraic is the family of sonoids. So we talked about zonoids also yesterday. They are Minkowski sums of line segments, and some of them are semi-algebraic. Some of the, some of them are not, and uh, and we will go back to zonoids in a while. So in the minutes that I have left, I would like now to give you an overview of the projects I've been working on lately, and uh, so that you can get a sense of what are more precise research questions 
in this field of convex algebraic geometry. So the first thing I want, uh, I want to tell you is uh, this work with Leo Matti, a PhD student in Trieste. And uh, here, the motivation was uh, to the construction of fiber polytopes, which is a relatively classical construction. And uh, it uh, um, basically studies uh, the combinatorial properties of polytopes uh, and uh, uh, of triangulations of polytopes. So we wanted to extend this definition also for more general convex bodies and to study the, the properties. So the idea is that you start with a convex body and you project it onto a lower dimensional subspace. And you look at the fibers of this projection. And in this way, you get a family of convex bodies. And now you want somehow to summarize these convex bodies. And you do this via an integration, which is made precisely. So you integrate this family of convex bodies and you obtain a new convex body. And you want to understand what are the properties of this convex body with respect to those of the one you started with. So for instance, one of the results is that if you start with a zonoid, no matter what projection you choose, your fiber body will be a zonoid again. And, but there are still a lot of open questions about which relations are preserved, like strict convexity and other things. So then this, uh, we also heard about intersection bodies yesterday. So these are uh, very popular also for valuations, uh, but as geometric objects, uh, they are not really well understood. So we don't know how they look like, okay? So we wanted to uh, make a first step in this direction to understand which kinds of geometric objects they are. And in this work with, uh, so Catalin is a PhD student in Berkeley, Marie at the MPI, and Isabel is a postdoc at the MPI. And uh, uh, so here we prove that if you start with polytopes, the intersection body is always a semi-algebraic set, semi-algebraic star-shaped set. And, uh, and there is a nice relation with zonotopes also. And, uh, but here now the natural next step would be to look at the intersection bodies of semi-algebraic convex bodies in general. So they won't be semi-algebraic, at least not always, but what would they be and what they look like? Or one question that you may ask is, uh, how, what are those semi-algebraic sets uh, whose intersection body is again semi-algebraic? So there are different directions in which you may go. Um, now to go back to zonoids. So there is this very old problem called the zonoid problem that says the following. So if you give me a convex body, even a centrally symmetric convex body, and you ask me if it is a zonoid or not, this is a very hard question, okay? So in some cases, it's easy. So if you go to two dimensions, okay, all centrally symmetric convex bodies are zonoids. Or if you look at polytopes, you just need to check the two-dimensional faces. Those are centrally symmetric, then you're happy it is a zonotope. But in general, it is a very hard problem to code. And uh, so here, the idea was to study a class of zonoids that is more general than zonotopes, but also strictly contained in the family of semi-algebraic zonoids. And this is the class of discotopes that are Minkowski sum of disks of any dimension. And uh, we wanted to study them from a point of view of algebraic geometry in order to characterize them and being able to recognize them somehow. And uh, so here, the next step would be to study semi-algebraic zonoids and uh, try to characterize them. So the beauty and the strength of this problem, in, at least in my opinion, is that it can be uh, viewed from many different uh, points of view. So you can choose to look at it from an algebraic point of view, but also zonoids are intimately related with some types of measures. So you can choose that approach or you can choose the approach of random geometry. So there are really a lot of possible uh, approaches here. And uh, so the last thing I wanna tell you 
is this project. So I come from the Max Planck Institute for Mathematics in the Sciences. So this is the justification of in the sciences part. <laughs> This is a project that together with Ben Sturfers, we did with the three physicists from Hanover. And uh, so they study quantum physics. And one of the main sets they're interested in, that is this so-called set of quantum correlations, is it turns out to be a convex body. And uh, here we studied the base case of this uh, uh, set of quantum correlations, which is in four dimension. And here in the picture, you see some three-dimensional sections of this set. And uh, this is related to this whole business of quantum computers and really constructing in practice quantum computers. And so there are a lot of people that are really interested in this subject. And uh, as soon as you go higher than dimension four, very, very little is known about these sets. And uh, yes, as I said, there are many people interested in this. And uh, okay, so I think that's with this. I think. Thank you.